Okay, so today I want to kind of talk to you about crossdomain.xml. Crossdomain.xml basically is a file that allows people to basically talk to a trusted site and understand how sites are going to be trusted. You can have a crossdomain that says all permitted crossdomains are done. Allow access from any domain, no HTTPS. Don't worry about domain, headers, allow HTTP request. And this is basically what's considered an open cross-domain file. In other words, if I can get access to a subdomain on this, all of a sudden the whole system, everything that belongs to this website will suddenly trust me as a valid person or a valid computer process in this entire domain structure. And that can be bad because if I lose one file or I lose one server, then that then I can put in a malicious file that would be trusted by the entire domain. So when it gets called in and rendered by someone else's browser, then I can turn around and do and inject code, inject uh, silent backdoor downloads, uh, do a lot of cross-site scripting, some really cool persistent stuff that goes along with it. So this is generally considered a fairly insecure cross-domain policy because it doesn't really, it says, you know, we'll allow access from any domain we're not going to worry about being secure. Um, all domain policies are allowed in cross-domain, so any domain basically, as long as it's considered trusted by this, I can do whatever I want to do. And then we can allow HTTP request headers from any domain. And this is considered basically anybody and their brother can be considered part of this domain policy. When you take a look at one that's a little bit more secure, allow access from Twitter, API, search, and static, and that's it, and then master only. And this would be considered a fairly secure one because it's restricting that domain down to just Twitter. Right, so uh, Twitter had a lot of problems early on with their cross domain that actually allowed some hacking activity to go along the way. And the reason why they locked it down like this was because these are the only places we want to trust when we're pulling in data off of Twitter, and this is how we basically want to use it. Right, so we're only going to allow Twitter, API, search, static, and it's a master policy only. And the only place that we're going to understand is anybody.twitter.com. So I would have a really hard time getting this file to do something evil where in this one it's going to be really easy because it allows everybody and anything and doesn't worry about headers. It will do anything across any domain. You can also get into some really complex cross-domain files. So this is the one from YouTube, right, from a subset called gdata.youtube.com. And it basically will allow access from tons of domains. I've never heard of the arrow domain, but then you never know. Um, ARPA domain, that would be a standard DNS reverse lookup, so you're in pretty good shape there. Uh, .com, the new .coop. I mean, it basically allows access from any of the root domains. And this one's an interesting museum. Um, and a ton of other things that are kind of going on. Again, this is a fairly complex kind of thing, but also allows domain from localhost and then the local loopback, but then allow headers from any domain to go along with it. So this is kind of that weird mix of stuff that kind of goes along when you're looking at how to secure a website. You kind of have stuff that can be very complex that's going to allow access from this from any of these domains across the world, oh, but it's also going to allow something a little odd like localhost or the local loopback port, and then allow the request headers from anybody and anywhere as part of its cross-domain policy. And you have others who are very restrictive in how they look at things, and they don't want to have anybody part of the way. And then you have other people who are just wide open, and we don't have to worry about it. So that's what cross-domain is basically all about, right? Is how do we define trust in this beautiful web environment that we have? Do we just want to trust ourselves, like Twitter does? Do we want to trust every root domain in the world, including localhost and the local loopback port, like Google does? Or do we want to be just completely wide open and trust everybody on the internet? Generally, we don't want to trust everybody on the internet. That can be kind of a bad thing. Right. Trust is trust is earned. Uh, Google, uh, Google, and Twitter know this very, very well because again, they're big sites. Lots of people trying to hack into it, and you know, as we saw in the last week, you know, one bad Twitter response can just have a massive impacts either on the stock market or on other places. So, kind of interesting in how we look at this. But again, this just sets what domains I'm going to trust. And how am I going to allow data to be accessed off my domain, right? So if I could go in and put in a subdomain on Twitter and it's not part of this 
cross-domain policy that allows me to set up trust, then the rest of the Twitter ecosphere will not trust this domain, and that's a good thing. Um, when I'm doing this, when I'm looking at the Google one, you know, we even have some of the oddballs, you know, travel and other ones that are kind of the new uh, upper level domains. You know, so I'm going to trust and allow access to stuff from all these domains because Google is worldwide. They have Google dot everything and it's monkey. So they would have to allow these big trusts because the Google ecosystem has to be trusted and the whole ability to go in and do my single sign on in Google so I can get to my Gmail and all my other Googly stuff without having to worry about it. This makes real good sense for a big company that's enterprise global like Google. And this one, uh, you know, this one just is kind of an open invite into, okay, if I can get something going on and and can do something evil with it, this one would make it a tons easier because it will allow anyone to be trusted and doesn't worry about being secure and it doesn't worry about any domain policies and just allow them all. So if I have Flash or something else running on this, this would just give me a, a beautiful vector to go in and pull interesting credentials off of your computer, um, even including encrypted cookies and anything else, logins, usernames, passwords, you name it. This would really kind of open up the door for me to do that. And that's why this whole process is really kind of interesting. So that's the nuts and bolts of a cross-domain XML file. And basically what you want to do is you really just want to set, like Twitter has, the domains that you will trust and allow processes to talk back and forth to. Again, so very common, very useful to see this. Google is a little bit more complex than normal. The Twitter one is very basic, only trust Twitter. And then the other one is just basically, hey, we'll trust everybody and it's monkey. So that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, give me a shout.